Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Google Forms. Now in this video tutorial I'm going to use a few web links and a bit of code. All of these links are provided on my blog at the web address provided in this video. Um, you will see the different web links as well as um, the code I'm using in this video that you can copy and paste from here. Okay. Now the idea, if you remember, we were working on a website um, and we've added the text to our web page and we want to spice it up by using different fonts. Now you can see on this web page here, um, I've already formatted my text using different size, using italic text, using different font color. Uh, I've changed the font but I would like to spice it up and I'd like to use different fonts. Now, most websites um, tend to use the same usual fonts um, that you've seen before, Arial, Tahoma, Times New Roman, Trebuchet, and so on. And in this blog post, we're actually looking at using different types of fonts. Now, let's investigate how this works. When you host a website on a web server, you're hosting the HTML and CSS code, as well as all the multimedia files, like the pictures, the audio files, the movie files. Um, the fonts, however, are hosted on your client computer. So if you design a website with a font that you've already installed on your client computer, this font will look good when you preview the website. However, you don't know what computers, what fonts um, other users might have. And they might be using a smartphone, they might be using a tablet, and they may not have exactly the same fonts as you do. So when you view the website, it will look good. When they view it, you don't really know whether it will look good or not. And to overcome this problem, we can use um, some fonts that are fairly safe. Uh, we call them web safe fonts, which are fonts that basically most devices, most computers will have those fonts. And they're the fonts I was showing you at the beginning, like Times New Roman, Arial, and so on. And on the blog post, um, I've listed uh, I've put a link toward a list of all the website fonts. Now, because these fonts are available on any devices, if you watch it from a laptop, from a smartphone, from a tablet, they're more likely to look fine on your website. An alternative to website fonts um, is to use Google Fonts. And the reasons we use Google Fonts is that there are plenty more fonts available, plenty more than the website fonts. Now, the way it works is a bit more complex, is when you preview a web page, the web browser will download content both from your web server, which is the HTML, CSS and the pictures, but also from one of the Google web server, it will download the font. It might not be a TTF file, but it will be a different type of font file. And because it's going to do that for any device from which you're accessing your website, then you are guaranteed that your website will always look good, um, whoever the client computer is and whatever font they've got installed on their computer. So back to our website where I've used um, a web safe font. I've got a choice to make now whether I'm going to investigate more web safe fonts and I provided a link on the blog post towards uh, the different types of web safe fonts. Um, you can see the Georgia font, um, the Times New Roman, the Arial, but you will see that there is a limited number of web safe fonts and to be honest, they all look fairly plain. So it's very likely that you will want to investigate Google Fonts instead and you will see on the Google Fonts website that they've got plenty more web fonts and they look uh, more exciting. Um, they're great to spice up the look and feel of your website. Now there are plenty of them. Um, it takes time to actually find the one that you may want to use. Um, so spend a bit of time looking at different fonts till you find the one you like. And then we're going to look at how to um, change our CSS and HTML code to use those fonts. I'm going to have a go at using the Lemonada font, which is this one here, to see how it would look on my website. Now, I've given you the code on my blog on how to insert this font onto your HTML or your CSS. Uh, Google also does this, so if you press the plus button here, um, your font will then appear over there. You can see my font is here, and it tells me what to do here. It tells me that in the head section of my HTML document, I should copy the following code. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to add this to the head section of my web page. So that's the head section. 
and I'm going to place it just underneath it. So font family, and you can see here it says Limonada. Uh, back to my Google page, it also tells me that in my CSS, um, where I want to use this font, I need to use this attribute here. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to click copy, and I'm going to use that in my CSS. Now here, I've got to be careful. Um, what do I want my font to apply to? I can use it for my H1, so only my headings will be in this font. I can use it for all my paragraphs or for the whole content of my website using the body selector. Um, and I can use either the style tag in my web page, um, but it may be that you've already specified font in your style.css file, so you'll have to be careful with that as well. Okay, you can see here I've got an H1 with the font family, which is already set there, so I'll have to be careful. But let's say I want to use my style tag, so I'm going to say that I want my H1, just, just the heading one, um, to be in this font. So I'm going to paste that here. Um, and I'm actually going to paste it so that there is no conflict uh, in my CSS here as well. Um, if you already have an H1, if you haven't got one, you don't have to worry about this. So I'm going to save both pages and I'm going to see what happened to my um, website, see how it looks now. So let's refresh this page. Perfect, welcome to Aquapark and it's got the right font. now. I may decide to leave it like this, uh, and that's perfectly fine. I may decide to use that same font again for the main body of my text. So in this case, I'll go in here, and if I want to apply to more than one selector, I can do so. Um, in that case, I need to use um, the comma between each selector. So I want the body, and I'm going to apply that to all the paragraphs in my text. So I'm going to use those three here. I'm going to save this, um, check my style CSS because I may be overwriting Yes, You see I already have a trebuchet font, so I'm going to replace it with my Lemonada font here. I don't know what I did for the body of the page, whether I already had a font. Yes, I had one here, so I'm going to replace that here as well. It's quite tricky here, but it's just so that there is no conflict between what I'm saying here in my page and what my style should be saying here. Save and let's see how it looks on the website. Uh, let's refresh this page. Yeah, that's perfect. I quite like it this way, so I'm actually going to leave it like that. Um, once again, you have to try many times. You may not like the font you've selected. You may want to use different fonts for H1 and body and P tags, but um, it takes time, but then it really looks different. It makes your website stand out. Um, all the code, remember, and all the web links are on the blog. So if you're not sure, you can always go back to this um, and use the code here. But best is to actually see how um, Google tells you how to insert the code as well. Um, and this shows you different selectors you can use. Perfect. Well, have a go. Um, try to use different fonts for your headings, for your paragraphs, and spice up your website. Thanks for watching.